Hello and welcome to the business end of the UEFA Under-17 European Championships. Over the past 10 days, the eight group stage participants have become four knockout nations. It's semi-final time and the four favourites have justified that pre-tournament tag. Later, the Spanish and Dutch meet in Sarajevo. Right now, we're going to find out the identity of the first finalist. It's Germany versus France and before the action, the national anthems. Well, historically speaking, we have the seven-time winners and holders here up against three-time runners-up in France. But in the here and now, two new groups of young hopefuls with a wonderful chance to become stars shining on a big stage here. Well, the team sheets bring no surprises from either coach, with both reverting to the sides they picked in their more crucial second outings of last week. Germany are captained by the imperious yellow white Qualification top scorer Marie Steiner hasn't netted here yet, but Plattner, Stolt and Alba have been responsible for all six goals that the Germans have scored thus far. Galina Dierkov of Poland has the honour of officiating this first semi-final. A little bit of light-hearted fun with the crowd ahead of the big kickoff here. Probably a good thing. Here's the French team. A couple of 15-year-old regulars in this side. Job, the full-back, Coutel in central midfield. Shana Chossinot has already played senior football for Reims. Likewise, Lorraine Walik 
at Nantes. She scored their all-important winner against Norway last Friday. Both of these nations essentially getting the job done with two games out of the three played, so there was no pressure on their final group outing, which happened on Monday of this week. Germany still won that for good measure, while the French lost 3-0 to Spain. and play in the other semi-final later. Here's the French bench with uh, a lot of Monday's starters back on it under the guidance of Cecile Locatelli. Plenty of quality on the German bench. All of them have had some game time already. Friederike Kromp is the coach in charge of the Germans. Two years without this competition. Edition number 13 has reached the last four. A lot has happened since the Germans last lifted the trophy when that was in 2019. The last championships, not just in the world with the pandemic, of course, but in the women's game in general, a much higher profile now than it was even then. In 2022, we've had eight nations present, the hosts and seven who qualified through a pretty unforgiving process. Germany top Group A with a neatly symmetrical trio of 2-0 victories. France kicking off here, came through Group B. Second to Spain in that foursome, losing to the Spanish but winning their other two matches to grab themselves this place in the last four. Away we go then. Semi-final Thursday, three of the four semi-finalists this year got to this point in that 2019 tournament. The French, the odd ones out in that sense. Freshness shouldn't be a problem, should it? Given A, the youthfulness and B, the selection. Although it is very warm in Zeniger, pushing 30 degrees. The winner here into the Sunday evening showpiece in Sarajevo. And with it, guaranteed involvement in the under 17 World Cup in India later this year. France coming forward, the first touch here for Yellow Vite. Been absolutely brilliant at the back throughout qualification and this tournament, the German captain. The goalkeeper behind her here, Eva Bircher. Given away cheaply, too much on the cross. Beaten nation here, going to the bronze medal match. Not that either coach is thinking of that. But that's bigger than usual. It is essentially a World Cup playoff. The winner of that game also qualifies automatically, as do the two finalists. There's Cecile Locatelli. We're talking ahead of this game about now they'll be facing a more direct style than they have with any other opponent in qualifying or during this tournament. Expecting that. Let's see how they deal with it. Friederike Crump there. In charge of the Germans. Svea Stolt. Almost turned into a good ball for Alba. It might have been meant to be a shot. Scored here. The Germans opened the tournament at Seneca last week, beating Denmark 2-0. She got one of the goals, Fair Stolt. Cheeky back heel that made an own goal. And their win later in the week. Excellent block from Yellow Vite on Kalba. Alba has just not for company here. It's just been hassled into giving it away, but the hassling was on the illegal side, apparently. So 
Oh, an early chance to deliver some quality and test out Bircho. He's not had much to do, it has to be said, in this tournament. A little more in the game against the Netherlands in game two, but nothing in games one or three. Talking to for Alba first. Walik delivers for the French. Not a bad ball. Solid header out by Veit. One back by Job. Dume nibbling away. Can't win that ball back though. Off Shaitla and then does, but illegally. Not on the chase, but beaten to it by Val Rubenstein. Didn't play, qualifying. And the youngest players at this entire competition, Emily Val Rubenstein. Still 15. But very much their first choice left back. Tell back to Captain Marquez. Like all but two of this side. Started games one and two, not game three. The maximum nine changes made for that Spanish defeat. Only two to keep their place. Tyrene Job on the right side of defence and Lola Boisse there in the middle. short but uh, taking no chances you wonder if Germany might feel the inspiration but perhaps also the pressure of what has gone before the previous generations as a nation so good at getting this far and beyond they're obviously doing something right and always have been going for final number nine here out of 13 possible France the underdogs just but still full of quality and not a long shot by any stretch Hoping to make their first final in 10 years, a match, incidentally, they lost to the Germans on penalties, having beaten them in the semi-final on penalties the year before. If you want a little look at the future, always interesting to look at the lineups. that semi-final in 2011. The German team had Lena McGull, Linda Dahlman, Melanie Lupoltz, Sarah de Britz, all of whom are Stars in the modern women's game now. The French side, Diani, Mbok, Lavogé, Toletti. To know a bit of few. Just not on the charge. Had the pace, but not the control when it mattered. right fellow Bayern player big Hoffenheim presence in this team as well three of these starters and here is cloning of Bayern good 
quite shake off Ilimbi, but managed to keep the ball at least. Janssen to Berla. Cheaply given away there. The break is on. Lucy Kalba. Couldn't quite keep it in. Scored the second goal in game one against the Finns for France. Give them a bit of breathing room at the Picada Stadium. Lucy Kalba. Calm and respectful, I think, so far. Nine minutes without a scare on either goal. Big prize for all of them, whether or not previous classes have done well. Totally new sets of players, of course. As this competition hasn't happened for the last two years. Normally you'd have a little bit of crossover one year to the next. The odd occasion Please. might even have somebody playing in it three times. It's rare, but 15, 16, and 17, it is possible. And there's a touch from the 15 year old Val Ravenstein. Now, Job steaming up from right back for France, strong in that 50 50. And so was Val Ravenstein. She's come away with the ball for the Germans here. Fans enjoyed that. Ferin Bella is the French keeper there. Lyon youth team goalkeeper. Elimbi. Well, it's well contested so far, but it's scrappy because of that. With a lot of closing down going on, good energy. It means the passing isn't fluid from either side, to be fair. There will be more space as they tire, and they will tire because it's warm. Very comfortable so far, Germany. 2-0 winners on this pitch against the Danes in game one, and they scored two early in that. In theory, the toughest game was the repeat of the last final in this competition against the Netherlands, but they won that 2-0 as well. And then with plenty of rotation, they beat the host nation, Bosnia and Herzegovina, by two goals to nil. Certainly plainer sailing than it was when they ended up winning the last edition of this in 2019. Lost a group game then. Out as well in the final. <laughs> Tara Olympic, regular left back, and he missed one of the qualification games. was in Mostar with one goal enough to beat the Norwegians because they'd beaten Finland 2-0 on the opening afternoon. And then they had the cushion, they knew they were in the clear, they knew they could change all their players, rest the regulars, and losing to Spain didn't matter at all really. Just would have changed the opponents they might play. Boisse looking for the run of Olimbi, who's now out of position. The Germans will try and exploit that now. But Captain Marquez is across on the cover. Boisse to her left. Here is Lola Boisse. Plays for Nantes. 
as he hasn't had a rest. The centre back next to the captain there, number four for France. Elimbi picks up the scrappy ball here. It's a scrappy challenge too from Cloning, but an important one. They know what they're up against here, France. Up against a nation that has won every game to get to this point. By that, I mean six out of six in qualification and the three group matches here. That said, it was not without the most enormous scare, Germany's qualification. The final match they went into with Austria. Both of them had won both of their games at that point in that mini group and uh, Germany had to win it to go through. They were 2-0 down and Laura Gloning, right back here, was sent off. And yet with 10, they came back to win 3-2. Without that, they wouldn't even be here to defend the trophy. That's why Gloning was suspended for the first game of the group stage. Back in now. Hasn't really settled yet. Big pressure on young shoulders. And enough respect about the quality of the opposition as well. It's all pretty compact and well contested. And there you see another instance of it. Maybe it'll be that closing down that brings an opening. And Lucy Kalber taken out there. Sandwiched by Veit and Shaitler. touch, wearing 19 for France, Calbert to deliver the free kick that she won, and she's gone for goal, that is ambitious, so is that, did it go over the line, did it go over the line, the French are asking the question, Ava Bircher has dodged a real bullet there, what a volley on the rebound, Oh, that's close. Kutel with a dream of a strike. Could not have come closer to the opening goal. It's the only chance of any note. You wouldn't really call it a chance in that sense, but I thought the free kick itself from Calbu was ambitious to go from that range, but what about that for technique on the volley? From Charlene Kutel. 15-year-old with a, a killer hit. Now Steiner down the other end. Well, that's a bit of a slice. Sver Stoltz interested here. It's down a bit by Poisset and his Coutel. What a goal that so nearly was for the 15-year-old. Snapping into the challenges, Boisset finds her captain in space. There's Alice Marquez. Tight and even so far, with one very big scare. Some total of the goal opportunities. Boisset to Olimpi. Seems to be moving perhaps a little better now, the left back. Marquez playing a ball for a run that hadn't happened.
defending that same goal here in Zeneca, the opening match of the tournament. Peter Bircher got away with a very nearly very embarrassing moment then. Shot too hot to handle here. No goal line technology, of course. Must have been close, though. that out of play there has got the leg strapped up a bit maybe it's causing her a little bit of grief wasn't moving freely a moment ago Blackner putting the pressure on Janssen likewise and Stolt done well to win it back for the Germans Platner forward Boisset out Stolt poking it tempting Marie Steiner to try and have a run it's very congested. It's quite physical. Now the Germans have a free kick in a dangerous position. And their top scorer in qualifying, Murray Steiner of Hoffenheim, has been barged into there by Kutel. Shaitler. Two 15 year olds in this German lineup is the first option. It may well be Alba here. In swing or out swing, right or left. Bit of sorting out to do in the box first. Still, some sorting out to do in the box. Galina Diakov taking no nonsense, as it should be. It's Shankler who drills it in low! Germany in front! No, flag up! Janssen thought she'd scored. Now the French have a break. Walik is in the middle. That's a disappointing ball and fight clears. Well, if that was something off the training ground, that's a heck of a routine from the Germans there. It could have been a miss hit that turned out handy for Janssen. Wonderful improvised finish from Mathilde Janssen. On that closer inspection there you would suspect she probably was offside not entirely easy to tell and certainly harder still first time around without the benefit of another look approaching the first quarter of this semi-final played and we've had one very close shave at each end now Right to Bowler. Janssen had about two or three seconds there to be absolutely thrilled. I think she'd given her side the lead in such a huge game. Thunder stolen immediately. Had to come off injured hip. The Seneca pitch at half time in the first game against the Danes, but thankfully recovered in time to. Play the Dutch four days later. Stolt battling away with a Limby and the German forward fouls the French full back. Good physical tussle there until that. Sven Stolt plays for Hamburg, club level. Here we open up. 
goal against the Danes here, and that back heel for the own goal. Next match last week as Calbert wins. Throw for the French. Limby finds an option eventually. It's back to a calmer pace all of a sudden as Bola. This is to her skip up, yellow fight, on track Frankfurt, regular with their B team. Not an easy senior side to get into, they've been having a, a fine season. Platner just dropping in between the two central defenders there. Loaning. French ball, and that might be a talking to for Laura Gloning, who does have a history with uh, naughty behaviour. Clearly didn't think it should be a throw. It's her red card in qualification. that nearly cost the Germans their place at this tournament. Berla all the way back to Bircher. In club terms, it's with RB Leipzig. Played all but one in qualification. Had a rest in game three of this tournament, having started the first two with Lena Altenberg. Getting a go instead. Shape they're coming forward for the Germans there. Stolt with a Limby in there quickly and physically. Likewise, though, Mandy doing that for the French. She's barely had a touch there, but she's won a couple of good tackles before Wally gives it away to Steiner, who then gives it back to Kutel. Look at the tackles going in here. This could get quite a feisty one to officiate this. Thankfully, Galina Diakov does seem on the firm side, and I think that's going to be necessary here because we have seen some crunching tackles going in, and there are three of them then. Steiner and Walik, the last two, converge. Bit of treatment for the pair of them here. I should think a, a welcome rest and drink because it is warm and warm enough to have this break anyway. both look okay. Steiner still waiting for her first goal of this tournament. She's already been a scorer for the Hoffenheim B team and an ever-present starter in their sixth qualification game. She scored five times. That was the most of any German player. But her colleagues who shared them around in that forward department so far in Bosnia-Herzegovina. She will be coming back on and so too Walik.
header having come straight back on. Here's Kutel. What a volley that was, Kutel earlier. Very nearly enough to burst through the gloves of Bircher. Comes the pressure. Shots not on Bircher. Uh, Robinstein. Space to run into. Nice little flick round the corner to Steiner there, but Albert eased out of it by Marquez. Really well won back that by Steiner, who slips it through here. And Janssen denied one on one. Best save of the game, that from Ferin Belaj. passage of play there that really highlights this game that the attacking players haven't had much time France won it, Steiner won it back brilliantly, it's a good ball it's also really good goalkeeping because as soon as Janssen gets ready to shoot here there's basically no chance of scoring because Ferry Bellage is right out there quickly and that angle is shut down to nothing excellently done by the Lyon keeper It's properly done. Half an hour gone. And it's a water break because of the temperatures inside here at Zeneca. A lot of young players blowing pretty hard already here. Two closest moments for the Germans. Not the most likely to be on the sharp end there. You can see warm enough to require hydration and cooling down by any means possible. Do it again in the second half as well. A bit of treatment for Shana Shosanot as well. had one tremendous volley from Charlene Coutel that was nearly spilled in by Eva Bircher and we've had Matilde Janssen twice from far closer range once she put in the net given offside and the other denied one on one the game in general a few chances those are the only three in these 30 minutes we've had Two good sides, two well-matched sides. Two nations, historically, who've seen a lot of one another at all levels of football in a lot of big semi-finals and finals. It's the sixth finals meeting, just at a 17 women's level. Germany and France this. Germany have the better record. <laughs> Alba kept pretty quiet so far. Very good tournament. Nicely done by Platner. Steiner. Must be so difficult to play against Marie Steiner. Real pest. Prince on the break here. Poked forward by Walik. Nice idea. Difficult pass to pull off. Straight pass like that has to be absolutely perfectly weighted. You could see what she was trying. Just too much on it. Enough to invite 
Bircher out and Veit. And Veit had it covered pretty well, you'd have to say. Spotting the danger early there, the skipper. Clapp has got the better of Kalba here. And then Job has cut it out for the French, who will start again. Kutel leaves it. Kutel heads it. Got the pass away. And her teammate trying to give it back to her. Lost it to Kutel, who in turn has lost it to Svea Stolt. Steiner then loses it back to Kutel. There's been a lot of that. It's been that sort of half. Pressure on. But between captain and keeper, a corner has been forced. Exactly the sort of forward you want in your side, Marie Steiner. There's communication there, Ballard should have come and booted that. the corner it's a good one as well that box though shots not gets it clear but not very far it's going to come back Janssen to Stolt Steiner great cross good chance and Veit could connect properly Arguably the standout performer so far. It's not been a game where individuals have been able to shine much, but Marie Steiner. Center forward, picking out a captain there. I think she'd expect to do a bit better with that. Couldn't get a good contact at all. doing what she does best. Deep cross look at Wally finds the gloves instead of Eva Bircher. Again, you see Paulina Platner, central midfielder, dropping in between as the centre back split. That's clearly a German plan. Berla forced it to going long, but then that's when it's given away. Talked about that direct approach at kickoff. Identified by Cecile Locatelli, the French coach.
Andy. Shosanot was the target. Difficult pass though to pull off and bending the wrong way for that. Definitely a sense that the players are just keeping a bit within, wishing to exhaust themselves with that warm conditions. It's a mistake from Kutel, and Shaitler's onto it very quickly. Now they accelerate. Shaitler! What a goal that is! Alana Shaitler, the 15 year old with a stunner to open the scoring in this first semi-final. It needed a goal, it's got one, and what a strike it is from Germany's number 10. Wow. To crack open a cagey first half. That's a moment she'll never forget. It was their second top scorer in qualifying with four behind just Marie Steiner. And that one is another level at another level. Just not as tried to spin there and ended up colliding with uh, Steiner. I think there's a bit of room here for Val Rabenstein. Alba having switched sides was having a hand in the air. That was the intention on the pass. Well, the French went close first here. Better chances since have fallen the way of the Germans. What have France got by way of response? They haven't really got. Mendy here into the game. There's a swinging arm there. In fact, I'd say there were two swinging arms, left and then right. A little bit on the dangerous side, that, from Melina Mendy. The left certainly seemed to catch Annaline Burla. Two team talk here that the treatment brings. Be half time in a few minutes. Bola thankfully okay. She was definitely caught by her. It's a little fortunate the referee didn't have a better view of it. Managing a smile amongst it all the Bayern defender. Telly to work out what to say, how to say it, and what to change, if anything, to try and make them perhaps a little more of a threat on that German goal. The one close moment they had was a just a one-off out of nowhere, one in a million strike on the volley from a, a loose ball after a set piece. Open play, really been able to get in behind. That said. Haven't done it much to them either. 
They did score plenty in qualifying France, only in game one of the six against the Swedes were they shut out. 22 goals scored across the remaining five. 2 0 enough to beat the Finns here last week and then 1 0 against Norway. And then shut out by Spain on Monday, albeit with a very much changed side. 9 of the 11, in fact. Gotta find a way through here at least once. Here's Kutel to Calva. Nicely done, Job. Robinson, Job again, stealing in, but now she's out of position. The Germans look to counter. Oh, but just trying to move it onto Steiner. It has got there eventually. Steiner running into traffic, and then the flag was up against her anyway. Now holders in front. The seven-time winners. It's the three-time runners-up. Not been a great deal to choose between them in their sixth meeting at this level. One very special goal between them now, though. A pretty cagey first half, in fairness, this. But as needs become greater as time ticks on in the second half you would think plus the potential for tiredness amidst the heat more openings likely to come we're into the first of four and in minutes at the end of this half because we've had essentially two hydration breaks given the injury before the second of those Steiner stood up well so far. Relatively late arrival on the scene in terms of this German squad, but not played in qualifying. 15 year old there involved once more. Just being reminded to switch back on in case the throw is taken quickly, which it is. Chossinot rolled her defender there, thought she was fouled, nothing given. Limby, hopeful more than anything that. Tough to sort really look where that one was going. Excellent challenge coming in there. Steiner is such a busy worker. Stein and she's got Kalba stuck in that corner. Somehow she's managed to squeeze that through. Mendy and Kalba drills it across. Wallik is trying to get there, but Bircher is there. Safe hands from the German keeper there, deep into first half stoppage time. It's one of the more promising moments, that, for the French. Just wonder if Kalba could have picked up teammate here. I think she's trying to catch the keeper out and smash it in. Maybe not such a bad idea.
and watch that back. The French might as well put the squeeze on here. Even if they're tired, they're going to get a nice long break in a minute, but otherwise they're just going to allow Germany to eat up these final seconds before the half-time whistle. Dara Saint, French is beginning to perhaps look a little bit tired. There's a curious thing going on here. Why on earth aren't the French closing down? Well, they've wasted their own time. It's half-time, and the Germans, as usual, are in front, but what a goal to get there. Schaetler with a wonder strike after Bircher almost spilt a similarly brilliant hit into her own net. Very few chances. The Germans have had the majority of the ones that have been there, but it's her goal at the moment that has the seven-time winners in front. This first semi-final is poised at the break. Germany won, France nil.
45 minutes to play. A special goal. As the holders in front here. France have to find a way to threaten more than they did in that first 45. They weren't completely shut down, but they didn't create that much from open play, it has to be said. Got to find a way to goal in the next 45. At least once. Straight to penalties remains an option. Excellent. Steiner will kick off this second half for the Germans. go then with an overload and a long ball you could see that one coming trying to get France turned around early quite happy to go direct Cecile Locatelli the French coach was expecting it they're not good at possession the Germans but they do like to get it forward pretty quickly and they squeeze hard and high quite often. Six out of six wins in qualifying, three out of three at this tournament. And the goal scorer here is neatly onto it. That's a lovely ball for Steiner! A whisker away from a second German goal within one minute of the restart. That performance would deserve it. Best player on show before the half-time whistle, Marie Steiner. Lovely way to pass from Shape Led. Delicate pass after a thunderous strike. As the Germans in front. Should be able to play next year. A lot of Shape Led. Be in Estonia next time around Sweden and the Faroe Islands missing out in the last two years when they were supposed to be hosting they will host the event after Estonia 24 and 25 it's been a long old wait for edition number 13 Play. lifted the trophy in Bulgaria 2019. Halfway to a return to the final here. The final that would be against either Spain or the Netherlands. They meet tonight in Sarajevo where the final will be held. Sver Stolt for Germany here. Alba on his wrong side of job and the ball was too heavy in any case. German fans, you can hear. Job with the throw for France. Just not missed it. Jans. Thought you'd given Germany the lead in the first half for a few seconds. Really clever little finish that, but just offside. Walik in quickly. Elimbi into Kutel. Back to Walik. Mendy. Straight up with that. It's way behind Shosnot. Still found its target, but not where it was supposed to. See that German squeeze again, and it's shape led doing it. Very little time on the ball. Moments like that for Kutel just there, who had a couple of touches before getting a pass away. Very few and far between. 
Heavy on the pass, offside flag up anyway. Just a reminder, if the French can level up 90 minutes here, do not have 30 more. It's straight to penalties if needed. That's how the semi-final was settled in 2011. It was 2-2 after 90 minutes with the French prevailing on penalties. They then lost to Spain in the final then. The year after, Germany beat France in the final, 2012. It's when the tournament went from a final four in Neon at UEFA HQ to an eight team tournament with uh, changing hosts. The Germans have won four of the six editions of that format as well. Spain, the other two. Key passes for the French have been a long way off in this game. Normally you'd say I'm struggling to create just fractionally out on those crucial final balls, but actually France has been quite a long way out with a lot of them. That would be the only disappointment so far, I think. Not the fact that they're losing, because it's a tight game and it's a very good opponent they're up against, but reason than another maybe it's that hassling qualities of this German side that's pressurizing the French into misplacing passes and there's another one there Steiner is in has got the better of Boisse Stolt foul surely yes Boisse desperate to recover so often the way after a mistake it's a free kick in a nice position for the Germans this And a few will fancy hitting this for Germany, I'm sure. Schaeffler is there again. Alba as well. Alba and it's over. It's been twice. Uh, Alba it's Bosnia Herzegovina game three of the group. One in qualifying. Still 16. I started every game at this tournament as well, Nora Alba. And Hoffenheim. That long ago, a few weeks ago, made her senior debut for Hoffenheim, Mara Alba. One of the top sides in the Frauen Bundesliga. <laughs> Mendy. Platner got enough on it. Job. Just not outdone by Val Rabenstein. Excellent game she's had. Till that pass, anyway. Just a slip from the German left back as she looked to clear there. Just not. Pass Val Ravenstein. Bite got a little piece of it, maybe a crucial piece. Yeah. Sure drills the cross into Alba. Yeah. 
Zalimbi. Would be brave enough to maybe play a little higher up the field. The French. Brave on the ball too. Extra body or two going forward. It will, of course, leave space inevitably. Has to be space somewhere on a football pitch. They're not at the point of having to go full on out and out attack. But clock will fly by for them. Calba. His shot's not. This is promising. Worth a hit. Could she have taken it on further? Disappointing that. Got the first goal of the tournament for the French. The win over the Finns. And she's not going to play any further part. Fanny Rossi. It's her replacement here. Ten minutes is all it's taken. It's out of choice, not out of injury. <laughs> Sir French colleagues can somehow turn this round. That'll be it. For Shana Chassanot at this tournament. Rossi straight into the action. Calva trying to help it round. They had a bit of an overload there, the French on this right side. but no one there. Hammering it clear. Before that, there's a challenge on Calva that brings the French a free kick. Right, too eager. And there was definitely a barge of some sort. once again to deliver. They've not had many set plays. Can they make something of this? Platner's header. There's Coutel, and there's a big bunch of players in there. And bursting through it all was the French captain, Marquez. Went the flag. Still want to know why Eva Bircher isn't coming for that, the German keeper, though. Not a long way to come. Got height on the mall anyway, plus the arms, of course. Curious. But no, happy to receive in a tight squeeze. But Jove has squeezed in herself to win it. Well, Rubberstein got just a touch fortunately. push up higher can't let the Germans eat up the clock time knocking it around at the back like that France Coutel Alimbi they just need a, a lucky ricochet or something like that France but so far Bircher really untroubled safe for that one stunner of a volley in the first half from 
Charlene Coutel. friends and family hoping they'll be making the trip to Sarajevo for the final rather than watching the bronze medal match and World Cup playoff Platna away from Dume and Olimbi Platna again to Steiner. The lads looking for somewhere to roll it out. Oh, he's reached the hour mark. We've got a change here. It's fair. Stolt is off for the Germans to be replaced by Melina Kruger. But through a lot of running, so the closing down begins at the front of the Germans' play. comes away with the ball and does very well. Flatner stealing in. Steiner interested momentarily. to fight off Olimbi to keep that in and she was fouled Germany have a free kick in a dangerous position here Dealt within the end by Limbi. Rossi, nice way to pass. Mendy. Rossi has kept on running through the middle here, couldn't get on the end of it, cut out very neatly by Berla. Suddenly it's turned into a German attack here. Is this the daylight they need? Alba denied brilliantly by Bellage. That could have been the game there and then for the Germans. Really good goalkeeping, it didn't just hit a reflex move to get that left foot out. Mara Alba, who's been strong here and was strong in that run, has already scored a couple in the tournament. Well, she had the chance to give Germany the cushion there. 
cushion you would suggest it would be comfortable enough even at this stage with half an hour to play to see them through France staying in it for now as Plattner attacks the corner her touch was not the final touch Germany will do it again from the other side back doing the defending it means she's not up front and look at the chase here from Rossi well, that ball was moving the play should not have restarted the French are complaining the Germans weren't out the way but they didn't have to take it quickly and actually shouldn't have been allowed to This is where they have to put the press on. And it's worked there. Dume forward. Kalba gives it away, though. Passing's just not been good enough. They do look weary. It's strange, given that almost none of them even played on Friday. Yes, it's warm. It's a week since most of them played the French. And maybe pressure in every sense of the occasion. The Germans are putting on them when they're on the ball. It's winning the day here. It is still only one, of course. It feels like a more comfortable game than that, but it is still just one. The Germans lead by. You can sleepwalk into trouble when that is the case. She'll certainly hope so, Cecile Locatelli. Not look like opening up the holders, but 25 to go. Learning cautioned here for that. And we'll kick away the ball. She put a talking to for a show of petulance in the first half, too. Something she'll need to curb that. Two very quick yellows that saw her sent off against the Austrians in qualifying that very nearly saw Germany knocked out of contention. Kruger took it on the chest and was offside anyway, even if she had controlled it. in the German goal, basically. What a run that was from Gloning. Alba trying to brush off Ilimbi. Forced wide by her now. She's done well, though. Cross too close to Bellage.
simple one that for Galba. Solid clearance from Yellow Vite though. Players, uh, those not being treated, will have a chance to get some water on board here. It's 20 minutes. If they can continue to keep this French attack at bay, and they've certainly done that very well, that one will be enough. Worked is Janssen options as well. Kruger through the middle, Steiner as well, and Shaitler off to the left. Lovely footwork from the goal scorer. She's still the match winner in waiting. Couldn't quite escape with the ball that time. Janssen tidying up. Paulina Platner plays it forward. Cut out by Marquez. Good chase for Walik, but Loning should get there first and does. Paulina Bartz is going to come on here for Germany. And Alara Schaitler will depart as the match winner in waiting. Now it's over to her colleagues to see if that, in fact, is the case. A stunning strike, the goal that has them in front, placed for the final 20 or so here. But Paulina Bartz, who did start the first game, actually, in Steiner's absence. Had a choice, I should add. Bart's on for what remains here, the 16-year-old. Jean Dumais has come out of the French midfield. Voici Le Paco is her replacement. There she is, wearing number six. Need a little more power in that midfield, the French. Calva and Wallik there. Marquez, the captain, up. Just need. Maybe a bit of luck, like a loose ball there to just drop to the right kind of foot. It fell to Paulina Plattner of the Germans, unfortunately, for France. <laughs> Steiner scrapping away to the very end. Mendy 
just had no joy up there at all. Melina Mendy in this game. Still time to be a hero, though. Still only one. Even though we had an unofficial drinks break a moment ago, we're going to get one now, the official one. Chance to towel down, cool off. And another little timeout team talk for Cecile Locatelli, who somehow got a few her players with some belief that they can get back into this. They might as well take some risks. It's not like goal difference matters. They lose. 2-0 going for 1-1, one, one. who cares? They've got to go for it a bit more, they've got to get players higher up the field, it's just not happening. see Germany incredible at any level of youth team football anywhere in the world clean sheets are a rare thing but 2-0 2-0 and 2-0 in the group one nil here solid challenge coming from Boisse on the cover the ball is where the Germans want it not where the French need it Powder draw on the press there, the French. Waiting for them to come. Maybe now. Calba. Fight. Does it go long? Bellage. Bartz. Chance denied by Job. Excellent challenge. Had to be perfectly timed, and wasn't it just? from Tyrone Job. Could have settled it there and then. Just that touch that brought it in field, it's a tiny margin. Kruger will have another go. It is definitely deeper this time, much deeper, and well done. Yeah. To the head of Platner, into the arms of Bellage. It's on target. Nothing more than that, really.
Marquez with the header. Kruger putting Jove under pressure. It's how to play it to German ball. As one nils go, this is about as comfortable as it gets. Maybe the French are just hanging their hat on one bit of luck. One lucky bounce, one rare slip of concentration at the back from the Germans, rather than forcing the issue themselves. It's a curious line to take. Janssen here, close down by Rossi. She's had plenty of energy since coming off the French bench. Headed forward for Bartz here. Bellad has been excellent. Paulina Bartz has had two great chances, having only just come on. Not for the first time. She did that to Steiner in the first half, didn't she? And Alba as well. Ferin Bellas out there really quickly, closing the angle down to just about nothing. It's a wonderful smothering job. Platt. All the way through for Bellage. Tell with the challenge. Coming in on Alba there. Referee didn't seem to want to give it at first. I think the assistant has uh, indicated that that was a foul. Marquez hit and hope there from the French captain. Bellage again quickly off the line. Well, she's been immaculate. Couldn't really do anything about the, uh, the shot that looped over it. She's made some excellent saves in this semi final. Just not been threatening enough going the other way, France. wins it back, they seem to have so much more energy this German side. Midfield colleague Janssen is there, got there in time. Lovely ball. And it's a hat-trick of chances for Paulina Bartz in five minutes since coming off the German bench. It's probably the hardest of the three, but it was still a decent opportunity for the 16-year-old. when Cramp can really take hold and uh, we've got a change coming here in fact a double change coming here for France Skipper's coming off apparently I got Felden ready to come on Disappointing exit for Captain Marquez, who's handed over the armband. She can do no more to help her nation. And also coming on, you can see there, number 14, Iman Turis. Start the first game of this competition. But, uh, on here for the rather ineffective Melina Mendy.
No one's put in more running in this game, I wouldn't have said, than Marie Steiner. Still to score the number nine for Germany at this competition, but you could see just how important she is to her side. Replacing her for the final act here, Lorene Bender. A couple of goals in qualifying. Trek Frankfurt player. Scored for their B team this season as well in the uh, division down from the Bundesliga. Goes against Portugal in their first qualifying group. Decent record, even if she doesn't start that much. Five minutes and stoppage time. There'll be plenty. Had a couple of breaks of real significance, plus the substitutions. I think it will go to 95, 96 minimum. Nearly there again, Germany. This defence marshalled by the yellow fight yet to be breached in very nearly four tournament matches. Be yet another rematch with the Dutch. The favourites in that other semi-final will be Spain, and I think the German defence will be tested by them if they play them again. Germany will have to get out of the way here. They're crowding round when France want to get on with their free kick for obvious reasons. Rossi trying to get round by Rabenstein. That's not going to run out of play though. And only now does it get out of play, having run that white line. Front line who started the game, who's still on now. Probably feeling it more than most because she's played all the games. Germany with Plattner, who's got hold of that. Wonderful drive of a strike, that. Bellage has been France's best player in this game, and I don't even think that's a close contest. Can't even think who'd be second. She's been brilliant, the goalkeeper. minutes plus stoppage time considering it's 1-0 you'd think there'd be a fair bit of jeopardy during the course of the second half they just haven't looked like scoring a goal though France doesn't mean that they won't doesn't mean that they can't and Therese is on the charge here as a limby comes forward and, uh, crazy as it might sound that was almost the biggest scare they've created in the second half. Comes with a minute of it left. Job. Miracles required stage maybe for France, or just one inspired moment, or one terrible mistake. They have the courage just to throw the players forward. It doesn't matter if they can see the second now. They're open on the counter like this, then so be it, surely. Alba with the pass for Kroger. Lovely weight on that ball. Kruger. 
on her own. Lovely roll from Alba, there's a pass on, she's played it brilliantly. Bender. Wasse in the way. Wallach hacks it clear. That would have been an excellent counter-attacking goal, wouldn't it? This is the strike for Paulina Platner. She's flying towards that corner. Great technique from a player who's shown that plenty already. This tournament alone, Paulina Platner. Four added minutes, that's all. Platner got the early opener against Denmark on this very pitch to get it going on the opening day, the opening match of this competition. Got the second in their big win against the Dutch in game two that ensured realistically that they would be top of the group. They may well be playing the Dutch again in Sarajevo. Maybe France will be playing them for that bronze medal match. Maybe France can find an equaliser. This might be it. This might be their best chance. The substitute Therese has won a corner. As we come towards the end of the first minute of the four added at the end of this first semi-final. One big jump. Good delivery required here for Lucy Kalba. Can the French grab something out of nothing and send this semi-final to penalties? Well, it's right in the mix. It's on target as well from Boisse. Well, they did find a head. Lola Boisse now wearing the armband. Heading on target, but safely grabbed by the grateful Bircher. Deutschland is the cry from the German fans and families. Zeneca. It was coming to the point where you thought they might have to settle for just having that one moment that we always, as football fans, think we'll have one chance. Well, that maybe was France's one chance. learning diving in when she's already been carded should have kept the ball in the first place anyway it's time to manage this game now two of the added four played giving the French the ball back Alba's been excellent wisely taking a bit of time making sure she gets the deflection from Boisset and the Germans will be in no rush to take this throw another really good performance from the reliable Mara Alba of Hoffenheim much of the throw though this needs a good pass, didn't get one. Val Rabenstein dumps it clear. Anywhere will do for Germany. Three minutes played of the added four. And that just held up with the spin there. Very well watched by Annalene Bola. Alba is outside here. I think she'll be in a hurry to cross it. German ball, and that might do it. Kruger going short. France aren't going to be able to get it up the other end now. A look at the watch from referee Dierkov. The four minutes are up. And the Germans have done it again. And look what it means to them. New set of players, same old story. 
Despite the excellence of Bellag in the French goal, her outfield colleagues couldn't find a way to trouble the holders here. For the ninth time in the 13 editions of this under-17 tournament, Germany are in the final. One very special goal in the first half late on has done it for them here. Alara Schaetler with a moment she will never forget. But they were miles better than the French in truth here. You felt like they had more gears and the French didn't have enough of them. It will be yet another final for the dominant nation at under-17 level. Germany will play for the trophy in Sarajevo on Sunday against either Spain or the Netherlands. They'll find out the identity of the other finalists tonight, of course, France will play the other losing semi-finalists in that World Cup playoff. But the Germans have won here, and deservedly so. The final score in this first semi-final, Germany 1 and what a 1, France 0.